Greetings from World Vision Australia in Melbourne and I wish to thank the conference organisers for inviting me to present even though circumstances prevented me from attending in person, unfortunately. But I wish you every success with the conference, especially at this time when the world needs trees on farmland and landscapes in general more than ever before. Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, or FMNR, has come a long way since 2012 when ICRAF, World Vision Australia and the Evergreening Agriculture Alliance co-hosted the first Beating Famine Conference uh, in Nairobi. During that conference there were many questions about what is FMNR? How is it distinguished from agroforestry and alley cropping and other related topics? So there was a lot of uh, unknowns and uncertainty about it. There's been a great increase in research attention given to FMNR and a prime example of that is the EC funded and ICRAF managed Regreening Africa project across eight Sahelian countries and I think six million dollars are committed to research within that project. And FMNR is being implemented by a growing number of NGOs uh, around the world. World Vision alone has introduced FMNR to about 24 countries and there's much, much greater donor awareness globally on the significance of FMNR. Today the Niger story is well known. There are in excess of six million hectares of land that was previously uh, all but denuded with an average tree density of four trees per hectare that are now covered with anything from 20, 30, even more than 40 trees per hectare. And this has happened very rapidly. Uh, calculating back using the satellite images, it seems to have, a, uh, have spread at a rate of a quarter of a million hectares per year for 20 years with no government intervention at the time and minimal NGO support. And it's something that has continued to this day. So nearly 40 years on, farmers are still practicing FMNR and adapting it to the ever-changing conditions that they face. FMNR continues to spread beyond Niger as there are many NGOs and other actors promo actively promoting it around the world. This particular slide is from northern Ghana and over a four-year period there's a very rapid transition in the vegetation in this country. So it's not the same season, it's not a deliberate attempt to deceive you, but focus on the vegetation and how that changes over a four-year period. Very, very rapid and low-cost uh, transition there. And the impact has been very high. In Niger, for example, the impact of having nearly six million hectares of uh, trees back on landscapes, farmers are growing an additional 500,000 tonnes of grain per year without irrigation or fertilisers or improved seed, simply by virtue of the fact that the trees have improved the microclimate and the soil fertility. In one of the poorest countries in the world, Farmers, are, uh, their gross income has increased by around $1,000 per year per household and cumulatively across the country this equates to around $900 million. And the uh, original investment of, of projects and, and interventions to promote FMNR was minimal in comparison to the benefits which continue to this day. Even so, FMNR has an image problem. The very things that have driven it and made it a success and have enabled farmers to embrace it, in some circles they're perceived as weaknesses. For example, it's low cost, which of course may, makes it accessible to even the very poorest farmers. And they're not dependent on overseas funding or expertise to initiate FMNR but its low cost at the same time may be perceived as being cheap and a second choice intervention when, uh, from the suite of interventions that you might use for land restoration. FMNR is farmer managed and of course this is a plus because farmers who manage their own land and natural resources are highly motivated to mould those resources to meet their own objectives. And every year the conditions are changing. The, the economic, uh, social and environmental uh, conditions are changing and farmers need to have that freedom to choose how they mould FMNR to meet their needs in any particular year. 
and, and yet again, in some circles, being farmer managed may be read as being unscientific or backward. And in some government circles, it may be perceived as being dangerous because some governments like to control their natural resources. Thirdly, FMNR primarily restores indigenous species. And there's great advantage to this, particularly if you're regrowing trees from living stumps, because the regrowth is very, very rapid. And th uh, the plants are in situ, they're already adapted to the environment, and many indigenous trees are multifunctional. They may be fertilizer trees, fodder, certainly windbreaks, the su supply of uh, fuel wood and building poles, uh, fruits, and, and so on. And yet, indigenous is often perceived as backward and inferior. And I see uh, a significant bias against indigenous species in many countries that I visit and a favoring of so-called elite and often exotic species. Dr. Richard Sturzaker, a CSIRO scientist, once warned me that if I relied primarily on anecdotal and qualitative evidence, the credibility of FNR would always be in question and its level of acceptance would always be low. And he was largely correct in that judgment. And so therefore I call on you as a scientific body to take a closer look at FMNR. You have the capability to analyze and to measure what drives millions of poor, supposedly risk averse uh, and small landholder farmers to adopt FMNR in droves and you can relate your findings to the pressing contemporary issues of our day, such as climate change, conflict, migration, land degradation, poverty, loss of biodiversity, and food insecurity. Farmers are saying that their livestock perform better in the presence of trees. And we certainly have instances in Kenya of milk production increasing 200 to 500% with the same animals. And in Uganda, instances where livestock stocking rates have increased 450% without causing overgrazing and degradation. But we don't know how much has fodder quality and quantity increased by. We don't know the impact of trees on animal health, on growth rates, reproduction, and profitab profitability. Farmers are saying that their crop yields have doubled in the presence of these indigenous regenerated trees. But we don't know under which conditions, which species are preferable, at what density and what pruning regime, and what are the co-benefits, which equally must be put into the equation if we're going to calculate the full benefits of FMNR. It's no longer uh, room for only calculating a single uh, benefits such as crop yield or livestock production. The co-benefits must, must be included in the equation. Farmers are saying that when they restore the vegetation, groundwater recharge is much greater and springs and streams which had dried up for decades are coming back to life. But we don't know how much area needs to be restored in order to have that impact. And what's the best way to select sites for recharge? Farmers are saying that crops growing near, near their trees are drought tolerant. But which tree species? At what density? What pr pruning re regime? And why? What are the mechanisms that cause this counterintuitive idea that having more trees results in more grain? What are the mechanisms making that even possible? Trees are helping to put more organic carbon back into the soils. But we don't know how much and how fast. And in, in this age of climate change, can FMNR actually mitigate against climate change? And how quickly, how sustainably, and at what cost? These are very, very important questions. And I'm sure that you as scientists have even better questions than I do. After all, that's what you're good at. Through your work, you can help to dispel myths and misconceptions about FMNR. Government ministers need the information that you provide in or order to create the correct enabling policies that will help spread and implement FMNR. 
donors need the information that you provide so they can justify their investments and use their money in the wisest way. And project implementers need your information in order to base their activities on evidence and in order to be able to measure the impact of their work. Dr. Sturzacker also said to me, Tony, FMNR has the farmer's vote. And I, I love that quote. But what FMNR needs today is your evidence-based vote. In order for FMNR to take off to the next level, FM FMNR needs you to quantify, to explain, and to provide the evidence for what farmers are seeing and acting on already in their land. Thank you.